Hello, hello, hello. My name is Justin Coletti. Thank you for showing up to MixCon. It's good to have you guys here. This is a bigger venue than ever uh, for us, and I'm super grateful to the Manhattan Center that they allowed us to be here. Um, I think this is going to get just bigger and bigger as it goes along. We've got a day two coming up tomorrow. Uh, we've got Mick Kozowski coming at the end of the day today. We've got all sorts of great mixers tomorrow, but today and right now, uh, this is one that I'm really looking forward to. This is a guy who has worked with Run the Jewels. This is probably as critically as acclaimed as you can get in hip hop, practically. Uh, Killer Mike, LP. Uh, also works outside of hip hop with groups like uh, The Veils. Uh, let's give a round of applause to a guy who's waiting in the wings. His name is Joey Raya. While Joey's getting himself situated, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this presentation. The reason we're able to give you guys free tickets to come here, and we're able to record this, shoot this, put these in-depth mix walkthroughs out on video later, the reason we're able to do this is because of our sponsors. And for this one, we've got a pair of sponsors. Alto Music in Brooklyn, and Avid, the guys who make Pro Tools. You guys have heard of Pro Tools, right? <laughs> I think we've done like a dozen of these presentations for MixCon so far. I think like maybe one was not on Pro Tools. So we're excited to have these guys. But uh, Alto Music Brooklyn, I'm really impressed. You can see their handiwork right here at the Manhattan Center. If you want to sign up for one of the presentations after this one, they built out this new room, Studio 7. It's right over there. After this presentation, you can sign up for some small group mixing seminars in both the Log Cabin Studio downstairs and... Studio 7 next door. I mean, these are two world-class studios right here in this building, and you can kind of get hands-on in them right after this presentation. Uh, so thanks to Alto Music for building that up and for uh, sponsoring this panel. Thanks to Avid Pro Tools for doing that. And thanks to Joey Raya for being here. Joey, thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. <laughs> We're in for a real treat. Joey has actually brought a track from Run the Jewels. Their most recent album, which is, I think, incredible. So, uh, thanks again, Joey, for being here. I'll let no you take problem. it away. Yep. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, Sonic Scoop and everyone for having me uh, come out and do this with all these other great engineers uh, these, these uh, couple of days. Uh, actually, when I opened up this mix, when they called and asked me to do it, I was trying to figure out what track to do. I decided on this one. I, I opened it up. I'm like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> what did I do? You know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, and, um, and besides the technical stuff, I'm going to try, I know there's like a lot, a big span of uh, uh, people just starting and, and whatnot. I'm going to try to go through, uh, you know, my theoretical approach to, uh, to doing tracks like this and, you know, what's important and what to not lose focus of. Because a lot of times, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, technical stuff's important, but, you know, vibe and, you know, really understanding the song and, 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 uh, um, you know, what you're trying to get across is, is, is you know, equally or more important. So, it's, you know, you have to merge both things. Um, so, um, just kicking it off now, uh, what I want to talk about first is, you know, the session coming in from the producer. So, I brought, like, the uh, original session that LP delivered to me, and uh, uh, this is what it looks like. I always do a save as, you know, save as uh, is, is, is one of the most important things. Do, do, do as many as you need to do. But uh, uh, when the session comes in, I always label mine OG for like the original um, session. So I could always go back, which I always wind up having to do. And one of the most important things to start with um, is your gain structure. You know, especially with hip hop music and stuff that can be loud, you know, you want to put yourself in a, in, a, in a good spot to, to start mixing. Um, uh, a lot of times when producers deliver a track, you know, they're, pu they're pushing things in terms of fader and gain structure, rightfully so, you know, they're, they're making a song. They don't want to think about um, 
oh, well, I make this louder, I, could, I should just lower these like 20 things. They're just gonna push the fader up because they wanna hear something a bit louder and whatnot. So a lot of times when, you, when it gets to the point where the track's done and you get it, everything is kind of cranked, the faders are loud, and you know, you're gonna start mixing. So uh, uh, you need to give yourself some headroom you know, to do your stuff both, both, and I'll get to this, both pre and post fader. So what I first do is um, so I just open this up. And this is what it looked like, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the first thing I do is uh, uh, clip gain. So, um, uh, and I'll, you know, select everything with the all group. And, and the, the clip gain, um, uh, so I, I, I should take that back. The first thing I do is y you want to see if there's any um, uh, level dependent plugins the producer did, used. Like, for example, um, there was a Studer tape machine. He was, he was kind of hitting that hard to go for like a, a vibe with, with a kick or a bass or whatnot. Before you adjust your clip gain, what I always do is commit the tracks, uh, which is a great feature in, in, in Pro Tools 12. Uh, you know, so, oh, you want to take off the all group for that. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, uh, something like that that had a, a level dependent plugin, I would print and I would commit that you know, blah, 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 and it would render it, and then I would, I would uh, get rid of the original track. So it would, it would print with that. Um, the reason why you do that before you clip gain is when you, if you clip gain before that, you'd be lowering the level to that plugin, which would defeat the purpose of like what was going on there vibe-wise. You don't want to kill any of that stuff. Even if, even if it's clipping in, in these cases, I'll still print it, you know. Usually I, usually I won't. The next thing uh, to do, I always do, is I just um, clip gain down. You know, I'll select the all group, uh, you know, show cl cl uh, clip gain line, which it already is, and, um, you know, just uh, clip gain, you know, down. I usually go down like 6 dB or so, between 3 and 6 dB um, on all the tracks. Sorry. There you go. So, yeah, just select everything down, like 3 or 4 dB. So now my, pre my pre fader level I just dropped. Uh, which is important, and, and when you drop with when you drop your level with, with the uh, clip gain, you know a good thing to do is to check, go to your options, pre fader metering, hit play, make sure you're not clipping on the meter with your pre fader, um, and you know if you still are clipping, you, you might want to go down a couple more dBs, you know, um, you know. Then the next thing I do is I find the hottest track fader level wise, like this one is at seven, um, and wherever that one is, and then I, I'll shift and I'll pull everything down. I usually pull the hottest fader down till it's at zero. So if that was at plus seven, I would drop at seven dB. And um, that sets up my gain structure. Now I know my, my pre-fader level is lower, so I'll have room if I want to do inserts, compression inserts, that kind of stuff. I'll have level there, headroom. And now my mix bus has headroom also. I just dropped the entire mix. 7 dB, but I still preserved the, the, um, the vibe that he had going on with his fader level. So everything is still relative. So that's that. Just want to mention that beforehand. Uh, and uh, now I'll open up the, uh, the, the session, uh, final session as it was. Any questions with that stuff? I know it's boring, but it's important. <laughs> It's one of those things and you want to avoid before you start mixing your, cl your clip stuff, both pre-fader and post-fader. So that's like the, the nugget of knowledge to take from that. You know, you want to play the track pre-fader, there should be no clips. Play the track um, post-fader and there should be no clips. And you want to give yourself some headroom because if you're going to go in and EQ and you only have, you know, a dB of headroom uh, pre-fader and you put an EQ on, you're going to be clipping that insert the second you start working if you're boosting. So you want to give yourself some, some, um, some headroom because you want to be creative, you know. Uh, you don't want to start fighting that stuff the second uh, you start mixing. And while this is booting up too, uh, uh, just in general with uh, understanding the, the, uh, uh, the, the vibe of the mix you're doing, like hip hop, you want to make quick moves fast. You don't want to get too heady and into uh, plugins and frequencies and this, and because you could really lose the vibe of the song. Hip hop, you know, genre-wise is uh, an emotional, um, 
you know, all music is, but it's very emotional. Uh, these tracks in this group, they're, they're very uh, emotional tracks, aggressive tracks, and you want to preserve that. You don't want to, um, you know, when you mix, you want to be quick, make moves quick, and uh, uh, be sponta as spontaneous as you can. And in that, you know, I just wanted to mention, you know, the importance of uh, setting up before you start mixing, you know, set up your, um, uh, some presets that you like. You know, uh, I always set up an EQ. I like the, the Pro Q2 Fab Filter. Um, you know, I'll set up a, a compressor, sometimes the, the, the Fab Filter compressor, some kind of harmonic plug-in. I, I, like um, I like the Saturn from a, a Fab Filter or um, uh, I really like the Sonics and Flater, stuff like that. And I'll put that on every channel and uh, before I start even. And, uh, and I'll also set up some basic sends, auxes, uh, and uh, delay, quarter note delay, an eighth note delay, um, a couple of different reverbs, like a plate, uh, a medium hole, long hole. I'll have them on sends. This way, when, when I start this track off and I hit play and I listen, you know, and I'm feeling the vibe of the song, I want to make moves quick, I don't have to start. Like, I'll tell you, the, the biggest momentum killer is this right here, doing this. This is like, forget about it. It's like, you're, you know, it's, it's just like, that's the, 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 uh, the vibe killer is going into that menu, you know? Uh, it's, you, you, by the time you select something and think about it and then, oh wait, it's not multi mono, or, or, you're, you're done. You just take a break and come back, you know? Uh, which, um, which also, I'm just gonna jump in besides the song just to mention tips for you guys, what, what it's important. Again, setting up stuff like that. The other thing, if you guys don't know about it, which helps, you know, the feet getting lost in these menus, is, uh, you know, select pl plugins you like. I, I don't know, do you guys know about the command select here for, for plugins like, for example, like EQ, uh, uh, yeah, let's see, I'll put Fab Filter here. There's a Fab Filter. So if you command click, right, it won't show up. But now when you go to the menu, it shows up here on this top menu, like already outside of that list, you know? So, uh, and it, it, the same thing works with Audio Suite. You know, you could go in here, delay, crystallizer, command select. And now when I hit Audio Suite up, the crystallizer's on top of the menu. You know, that's, that's a, that's a big, big uh, uh, advantage and it's gonna help you mix it, trust me. Besides the technical stuff, having that, like, you know, when you open my Pro Tools and do this, I have a nice list on top of like my go-tos that, and I, and I don't have to search in these side menus and uh, get lost. So that's another tip. I actually wrote these things down so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, now setting up the, uh, part of my, my, my session setup. So basically that goes along with like building a template. It's, it's, it's very important to have a template with a couple of plugins. You wanna make, make, make it like you're walking into a studio like that you know, I learned in and whatnot, which is a console. The reason why they designed these things is they were quick. You know, Everything was in a strip, your EQ, your compression, you had cues for reverbs and a fader. And you could very quickly get to, to, a, to a sound you want, a, a good balance. You know, the balance, getting the initial balance quick is, is, is essential, especially with, you know, a vibey song like this. You know, you don't want to get lost. So you want to kind of create that atmosphere in your template, open it up, and then, you know, after you get the <clears throat> things happening, you could switch things out, you know, which, which, which I always do also. But you want to just get to that uh, um, st stage quickly. Um, now, in terms of my template, what I tend to do um, is I, I have subgroups, uh, which you'll see down here. Uh, scroll, scroll. So much scrolling. This isn't even a big track. It's like so much. Stuff. Uh, okay, so they're in green. And co again, color coordination, important. Again, speed. You know, speed is, you know, they say speed kills, but it doesn't. It's like that's the, some of my best mixes are the fastest ones I've done, like, uh, you know, uh, under massive pressure, get this done. We need. We only have two hours. It's like you just kind of make moves organically, and 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 you know, it's it's you want to uh, preserve the, the that raw raw emotion in the in these songs. So what I do is I have subgroups. Um, 
they vary sometimes, uh, uh, but but mostly they're they're as such. I keep my subs separate, you know, especially with any hip hop now, especially Run the Jewels LP, you know, there's monstrous 808s and. You know, the 808s these days are, are just devastating. Um, it's really, <laughs> they're like, I'm like, oh my God, it's just, they're just they, they've gotten like bigger and bigger. And uh, so I keep subgroups of everything. So I have my 808s, I have my drums, which is the rest of the kit, um, percussion, bass, music is like my synths and stuff like that. And uh, uh, music, in, depending on genre and track, can be broken down. I, uh, sometimes I'll break that down to uh, uh, synths, guitars, if there's a lot of, with LP stuff, if you listen to the rest of the record, there's, there's, there's stuff with uh, a lot of uh, acoustic instruments and guitars and basses and stuff like that. I might want to separate those. Um, uh, that's sound effects, uh, lead vocals, uh, mono, lead vocal, stereo, then the vocal effects, stereo, vocal effects, mono drum effects, music effects. So everything is, um, everything goes here. Like the whole song is on these green tracks. Um, you know, multiple reasons for this. Uh, uh, helps with speed, everything shows up there. So if you have to um, pull something down, you know where your bass is, you know where the music is, you know where your drums are, you know where your 808 is. It just, and it's just a nice organizational thing. Sometimes, um, like here, I'll throw like a Phoenix uh, plugin, which I like a lot. I use it really uh, subtly, uh, just just uh, to touch some of the tracks, just like a tape machine. But it's a nice additional insert point, like after you're done, to like treat things and whatnot. And then from the subgroups, it goes to the mix bus. It brings me up another point I wanted to mention: label your buses, like label all your buses. That's like. Uh, that's critical for, for, again for speed and everything else. Don't have bus five six because it's like it's gonna it, it'll kill you. Like you'll be working and you're like, what's this? And you're like, oh, I'll remember, like bus one two is the eighth note delay. You're not gonna remember. And you just wanna you just wanna grab it, um, put little symbols in there so it stands out. Like my mix bus, I have like a little plus on each side. Just little little things like that. So all this stuff goes to the mix bus, which which um, is over here. Uh, uh, I made an act of my initial mix bus for this session because I was using outboard gear, um, and I duplicated it here. For my bus compressor, I use an outboard uh, dangerous, um, dangerous audio, uh, uh, their bus compressor, uh, which I love. And um, I also use an EQ, this Buzz here. It's like a 500 series from Buzz Audio called the Tonic. It's a great discrete EQ. But that said, there's, uh, there's great plugins that uh, that that you know, you don't need to use that stuff. You know, the plugins are getting better and better. I like having my hands on those contr controls while I'm mixing. That's a lot of it. Um, but um, here for the dangerous, I duplicated that with this, the glue compressor, which is a great. Uh, oops, didn't put my code in for that. Which is a great uh, uh, SSL style type of compressor. And um, for the EQ, I used the um, the uh, uh, Millennia. EQ, which is it's a nice, transparent, clean EQ, just if I feel like I needed to give it like a little more bump on the lows, a little, little touch on the highs. Um, and I could get in the rest of the chain later. My, my, my chain, I guess I could talk about now, my, my, my uh, limit chain, which I call it uh, my mix bus, I call it mix limit, because this is where it's going to hit the bus compression and whatnot. Uh, uh, here I, I go through the, um, uh, the slate channel and I switch around here. I went with the the, the SSL emulation they have. Um, uh, then my two bus compressor. Then for for uh, plugins that don't have a meter or, or gain, I, I throw one of these Duros in between everything. So there's, there'll be one after the compressor. Then um, this is a great EQ because uh, it does MS. I like doing a lot of MS stuff on my mixes. Uh, especially tracks like this with big subs, very, again, very lightly. Um, um, I did like a slight rumble cut here at 12, and then it's, uh, with the MS uh, plugins, it's really nice to clean up your sides. 
uh, and that's, that's one of the things I like doing a lot is just filtering out the low end from my sides so to keep, the, keep that stuff clean. Um, uh, so, and then, uh, then again, this doesn't have a meter or an output meter, so I usually put a Duro in there. So there's not much, it looks like there's a lot going on there, but a lot of these are meters. A little bit of the ozone, um, uh, just for a little bit of sheen. Uh, and again, a touch of that EQ, I was saying, another meter. And then um, this P maximizer is kind of nice. I, 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 I use this uh, uh, off and on, depending on the track, because it's very track sp specific. Um, and um, you know, you kind of mess around with the shape control and the mix. And then um, the limiter, I, I always, when I deliver, especially initial mixes to clients, I'll, I'll print them a little bit hot. But uh, on the Soxford limiter, the one thing I really like is this, this enhanced curve. It's kind of like a, a super um, top end kind of like sizzle. It, it, it's, it's not harsh at all. And, um, um, and again, I use, use it very lightly, like all this stuff, because this is you know, going to go to mastering also. So. And then with the input gain, you know, I'll hit this, I'll pump this up when I'm delivering you know, the rough mixes uh, uh, just so they hear it the way they were used to hearing the demo. Um, and that's kind of the, uh, oh, mix key filter. Uh, one of the things I like doing is, uh, you know, these plugins will have um, uh, side chains, like this, this glue one has, uh, you know, an external side chain. This was, I didn't put my code in, so it's not letting me see it, but um, um, they'll have an external side chain filter that you could, you could crank and, with this type of music, like the hip hop in general, one of the things I like, I, you know, my bass, especially my 808s and my subs, you know, I don't like them. Sometimes I don't like them touching anything, uh, especially compression. Like I don't want the compressor hitting them at all. Um, so I'll make sure those frequencies are filtered out of the side chain of, of the bus compressor. Um, some comp some uh, plugins have, you know, a little filter you could roll off. I personally like. Uh, making my own sign chain filter. And I do this, I have been doing this out of uh, habit because um, I use an outboard mix bus compressor that has a side chain input. So what I do is, like you saw before, I had everything going to mix bus. So this channel also, the mix is being you know, duplicated here. And then um, I have a pro Q and I'm rolling off you know, a lot of the low, low end. So, and you know, the entire 808 is rolled off. So none of this is hitting the, uh, the, the, the bus compressor. You know, I just want that 808 to like, just get out there full. And you know, some things I, 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 uh, I experiment with also is, and what this is why I do this kind of a modular like gain structuring at the end of the mix is um, my subgroups here, you see they're all going to mix bus. What I could do is, you know, I, instead of this going to the mix bus, I could have, you know, my 808 and go to the print bus, right? So then doing that, it will, it will bypass uh, this channel completely and it will go straight to print. So that's like really bypassing it. That then it's not hitting any of the processing that's going on there. It's going straight to, basically straight to tape. Um, uh, and I'll always, uh, a, B, that, you know, when I'm printing it, I found it, I, I liked it better this way for this song, so that's the way it ended up. Uh, remember, there's no rules. You have to, like, use your ears. You have a kind of concept, but in, it's, it's, you got you to gotta do what sounds best. And, um, but, you know, using uh, external, besides, you know, the roll-off um, knob that's in a lot of the plugins for, for side chaining, Having your mix go to a, a separate channel and using that for the side chain feed is nice because you don't always have to uh, uh, roll off lows. You know, you could have a side chain that boosts, like if you want to like cut sibilance and you want the compressor, the bus compressor to react more to uh, harsher frequencies, say at the end, you could bump that. So now like your compressor, instead of, besides rolling off the lows, it's gonna be more uh, uh, keyed into this boost I just did at 7K, which may or may not be good. It may sound cool, but it's, it's you know, you have a lot more versatility doing, doing your side chaining that way. Um, okay. So that's all that stuff. So now, hopefully you guys are getting the picture of like the approach, like the initial stages. Also, mixing wise, you know, 
All the stuff I just told you, after you finish doing that, setting up, setting up your, 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 your um, uh, inserts and your buses, routing all these sounds to the specific buses, you gotta take a break. Like, don't just jump into the mix. Fortunately, I have a great guy I work with, Kevin. He's, uh, uh, he does a lot of this stuff for me, especially like on records like this when it's always like a crunch situation. And we, have to, we have to get through these tracks quick. It's, you know, our brains aren't meant to, to handle too much, too much, especially like heady type of shit like that. It's like, you gotta like do all that stuff and the routing and stuff like that. And then depending on the schedule, you know, uh, uh, start the next day or um, start in an hour or two. But you gotta like, you wanna like do that, chill out, and then step back in and then, you know, work on the music. You don't, you know, it, it's, it's, it's possible to do and sometimes you have to do it, but preference is not to do that. Um, just so you know, uh, you know, it, 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 everything is more organic. Um, another thing I do too is in between tracks, especially when you have a zillion tracks, which tends to be the, the norm these days, um, I create VCAs and just name them w w like the kind of section they're in. So, you know, you create a new track VCA, this is called drums. And then, you know, as you scroll down, you know, you'll see another one, cymbals, percussion, bass. It helps, and I, you know, you give them a specific color, it helps you navigate this, this session fast, you know, because that's another idea killer is trying to find stuff. Um, okay, so this track, Legend Has It. This is a uh, uh, pretty well-received song on this record. I didn't know which one to do. I have a bunch of favorites, but um, I called, consulted some people. My mastering engineer, Joe Laporta, he's like, you gotta do Legend. I'm like, all right, we'll do this one. Um, the way I started this track, <clears throat> which is how I start a lot of songs, especially Run the Jewels, is with the vocals. Um, uh, vocals are challenging, and um, Run the Jewels, as a group is, is extremely challenging because there's two vocals with, with um, tonality, two different types of voices, you know? So, you know, it's, it's, you're basically mixing like hip hop songs for two different vocalists that are in the same song. And sometimes you have a hook that's a different singer. Sometimes they're singing like that. So it's, it, there's a lot, a lot of work uh, going on in the vocals. And, um, you know, um, Part of the, fir the first thing I do is, is, is getting these tonality, tonality, having the vocals match. You, you know, the two different people, so they're not gonna sound the same, but you want the character and the vocals to be um, similar. You know, you don't want one being thick, one being thin, one being too sibilant, one being dull. You, you, want, you want them to be, uh, have, have similar, similar qualities. So um, that's the first thing I did with these guys. And using my vocal approach, for, that I, that I kind of settled on with this record. Uh, the first thing I do is filter. You know, usually there's a lot of unneeded lows in, 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 in the vocals. Um, then I do a light de -esser. Um This Eosis de is is uh, one I liked for this record. Uh, uh, for these guys, it kind of sounded good. It's nice and quick. Um, you know, de is a very, uh, uh, I, I think, tricky thing. I'd rather not have to do it ever. If I had all the time in the world, like on a track, if they were like, Joe makes the song, you know, you have two weeks, uh, you know, I would go in with automation and, and, and ride down every sibilant sound. Uh, that's, that's to me is the ultimate way to do things because, you know, as good as the DSs are, they, they still have a little bit of impact on, on your high frequencies. Um, but that's a pretty good one along with the, uh, um, the Pro DS, which I use again. And then I'll do, uh, I usually do two levels of compression. Uh, I'll start with a, a faster compressor. I like the Pro C um, uh, compressor. It's, it, and I usually set this for a fast attack and a pretty fast release. And I have it just not hitting hard, just get, catching a couple of dBs off the top. And then I'll go into like a Vibe compressor. I like this, um, this uh, Universal Audio uh, uh, LA compressor. It's, it's got a lot of vibe to it, you know. Again, I don't hit it hard at all, usually between like a negative, you know, minus one, minus two dB of reduction. And um, the emphasis knob on this compressor, I like a lot. You, could, you can tailor the high end a bit 
by, by you know, turning this guy over here. Um, and then I go into like my kind of character EQ, which I really like is the mag EQ for, the, for, for, the, for vocals in general, especially for these guys. And um, the mag EQ to me is like really musical, like the, the bands work, the relationship between the bands uh, are great. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times or sometimes it, it does things that you think it's, it wouldn't do based on the frequency and based on the knob you're turning. And then the interaction, you know, turning one knob with a, a boost, one knob with a cut reacts in really musical ways. So, and it has this air band, which is great too. You could see like on the vocals, like a 20K there, I have it you know, pretty heavy just to, to give it like that, that top end. And it, and it really doesn't uh, add to semblance, which is why I like it a lot. Um, and then I go into my harmonics, which is this uh, Oxford inflator. And I'm not hitting it too hard again, but um, this is a great plug. And I don't know if you guys ever mess with it, but it's, it, it, it's you know, you got to use it gently because you could, it's one of those things that sound kind of good and you could get too excited with it. And like, then you kind of like have like a crazy squashed jumble at the end of it. So you got you to be, but any of this stuff, you just have to be uh, um, uh, gentle. Um, and then just from the, the boosting and whatnot that I did, I hit like a, another de -esser. And then um, um, one more EQ, which is uh, my SSL EQ. I just use at the end for, for some, so again, for, I like the tonality of it. And I used to do some subtle uh, uh, boosting mainly with it. And then the uh, finisher, I'll get to this after, but the finisher is like uh, Arvox. This is my kind of like light limber that I use. Um, and then um, I always leave one space left after my Arvox. And this is kind of for post mastering type of comments and feedback I get. Um, it's usually like really subtle stuff, like, you know, El could use like a little boost here, blah, blah, blah. And then so I usually use this mat. It's extremely clean and accurate. I usually put that at the end. And I'll solo this and play it for you. It's really reverberating here, so you're not going to get the vibe. But I'll. Is this like too in depth? Is this getting boring or no? This is all right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I talk about this stuff and I'm like, do I, re I do all this? It's crazy. <laughs> um, but this is why I'm saying it's like just get, gets involved now the, the, a lot of my main compression and like I said I hit the stuff like the C2 and the LA2 way here I hit light um, um, what I like doing uh, in general with my vocals and especially with these guys is parallel processing um, so you see these track L lead volt, which stands for um, uh, this guy, the um, Thermonic uh, Culture Vulture, which is a, a great distortion. It's, it's my, one of my favorite type of boxes. I have a couple of, uh, uh, you know, real analog ones. Uh, uh, UAD does a great job on the plugin, even though it's like really heavy DSP wise. I wish I could run like a ton more of them, but I can't. Even, even, even things get maxed out quick. but. Um, I run one of these in parallel, and then I run a parallel compression. Um, I'm using 1176 uh, uh, slammed for this. And then these are both, you know, um, these channels are both percent pre-fader here, you know, full up at zero, pre-fader here. And then, um, and then what's important is, you know, I have my VCA uh, control over these, so, you know, you group the, the main bus where I have all of L's, like for, this, this whole setup is the same for Mike, so I'll just explain it here. It's, the, it's, it's pretty much the same thing for Mike. Um, you know, all of his individual vocal tracks will, will end up in his lead bus. And then I have these tracks in parallel, and then I'll group, you know, the tracks that are in parallel, create a group, and that becomes like L's or whoever, the, or Mike's lead trim. So this is where, you know, this, this VCA here controls these tracks. Uh, this, this shouldn't be an M. And, um, and um, it's a quick way to, to, you know, to, you know, you need your VCA to control these. So, you know, you, when I'm mixing, you'll get your level, then I'll bring in my distortion and bring in the parallel compression, and it makes a big deal. I'll see if uh, I'll play some stuff here. 
And uh, I'll go back and forth so you can hear it. Let me see here. Every new record's my dick in a box. We get a doozy, the moolah's a lot. You're getting used to me doing no wrong. I don't play chicken, you prick, I'm a fox. You wanna kick it, I'll give- can, can you hear that difference with those pulled down? Or not, I'm trying to see. I, I know the room sounds kind of crazy here, but uh, I'll play it and I'll bring them both back in. Every new record's my dick in a box. We get a doozy, the moolah's a lot. You're getting used to me doing no wrong. And it's just like that extra, uh, vibe you get from that stuff that, uh, um, that adds a lot to the vocals, cutting through and uh, uh, the um, uh, enunciation and the, the you know, you, you, get, you, you get a lot more of the attack and you get a lot of it without having the vocals be uh, over compressed, which, which is what you don't want. I just want to take off this pre fader meter right here. Okay. Um, and and then like a lot of my next step is to do, I do the same thing in terms of EQing and um, uh, 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 and whatnot with Mike. And then the, um, the next stage is getting them balanced. And um, again, like, you know, mix wise, one of the most important things you could do uh, is create your uh, uh, insert points, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, not in, sorry, um, memory locations, and when when and you could see like the automation going on here, on on L's vocals, just kind of getting his stuff to to to, to uh, be balanced, and then um, down on Mike's trim, you could see it. And then what I do also afterwards is I make an all lead trim, which is L and Mike, and um, this will bring both of them up or down. And then I could also do automation between them um, at this stage. Uh, uh, also, um, and then a lot, you know, after I get them EQ'd, after I get the sound I want, and after I get them balanced, uh, 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 I'll leave them unsoloed. I don't, the only time I really solo, oh, yep. Oh, well, pre-fader, you want your, um, uh, your level, before you hit this fader. So, you know, it, it, you want to hit th these processors consistently, especially because you're doing parallel compression. So, um, you know, it, it, when you got to a stage like this where you could see the automation going down, if you weren't pre-fader, you'd be lowering your, your send level and then that would affect the compressor and, and um, the distortion, because those are both, uh, yeah. Yeah, you want you want to like the the compression you want to be hitting consistently is hard, and the same thing with the distortion because a little less level there is like is, is less distortion. So, yep. No, sometimes I filter. Depends on what I do. Like, um, you know, uh, after this one here, I uh, uh, I de-est a bit. Um, uh, sometimes I'll. Uh, filter out lows, but with the vocals, I kind of leave them full frequency. I, I just tend to do that. Um, you know, with, um, we'll get the stuff, I'll, I'll show you later when it gets to the drums, but drums, I kind of always, uh, after I parallel compress, I always uh, do filtering and EQing also. Yeah, so it depends on what the what instrument is or, you know, what you're trying to work with. And then memory locations, it's very important, especially with songs like this, when you have multiple, multiple uh, vocals and um, multiple vocalists, you know, to get make sure everything's balanced. Um, it's a it's a key thing to just the way you could jump around, and that's that's kind of um, uh, just I forgot to mention that earlier. Just to, you know, when I'm leveling out these guys, being able to jump around, and and I'm sure you guys know that. Like after you hit play, uh, I'm not going to talk over this, but you, you you'll see after you hit play. While the tape deck's rolling, you could jump around memory locations and you could quickly like A, B sections like this, like. Uh, the vocals are muted, hold on a second. Up. Every new rack is my ticket. Pitting the jelly won't snitch. I run the room with the wits. Fun. Every new record's my dick in a box. We get a doctor 
of death, killing our patients of breath. We move among the ones who think of me. So it's just like, uh, um, I don't know how it sounds like here. It sounds really where I'm sitting, so I'm like kind of horrified. But it's like a, it sounds like I'm behind the speaker. So, but uh, anyway, it, that's kind of a, a thing I do a lot. What I do, is just jumping around like that, just to make sure the vocals are balanced. And uh, what what I'll do also is um, uh, pull out the transport, and using the transport in conjunction with memory locations, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll change the pre-roll time. You were hearing some pre-roll there, so I was, I, I was I had it at one bar. But you know, if you have your pre-roll set to zero, doctors of death, killing our patients. Beast, I'll pull a sword and you sit. We move among the ones who think of me. Fight every new record. We are the murderers, yeah. You know, those will jump in right at bar one. But then sometimes I want to hear it like rolling into it, so you could just you know pre-roll. You could just have a go back a bar and that'll work in conjunction with your memory location so you'll get some like lead in. Um, again, this all, all this kind of stuff helps like the vibe and the, and the speed. Um, okay. Um, for now, I'm just gonna mute the uh, vocals. Um, uh, I'll leave trim. Um, again, like uh, comments fields, really important. You know, uh, when I'm printing a mix, I'll print like make notes in there what like my original level was for the for the for all the leads and if we're doing a vocal up or a vocal down you know just make notes there that kind of stuff um okay i'll try to move quicker i know we're losing time um okay uh th this song uh the drums again i'm going to mute the vocals one of the things i do my mix approach is i never i try not to solo and mute as much as possible. After I get the vocals leveled and in and at a level I like, I'll leave them in while I'm working on the track. Um, you know, with hip hop and with powerful music like this, if you start just with the drums and whatnot and you get everything massive and then start working on the vocals, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Like you're not gonna, it's, it's, you're gonna wind up fighting the whole rest of the way. So it's good to get your vocals powerful. You know, a hip hop song, you should be able to rock the acapella and you should be able to feel the rhythm of the song and it should be able to stand on its own. You know, you should, you know, that, that's, that's a good vocal mix, you know, and it also, you know, lets you know that you haven't compressed it too hard because you could hear where the attack is, you could hear, you know, a, a, lot is, a lot is there. So the acapella should be able to stand on its own. Then I start working on the track as a whole, like I'll listen, I'm like, this could use something, that could use something, but everything will be playing and I try not to solo as much as possible. You know, and a, good, a good way to, to uh, you know, keep you honest with that is, you know, set your solo mode to, to XOR. This way, you know, if, if you do solo something and then you solo something else, it defeats it unless you hit uh, shift. So it's, it's, it's always a good way to, to work. Um, so this, this, this is a very, you know, when, when, you play the, when I played this song for the first time, in the rough mix, you could hear uh, it, it's a very drum heavy, uh, uh, that's where like a lot of your aggression is coming from. That 808 is so important, you know, and then, and then the snare comes in and the snare is so important. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very drum heavy mix. Um, and again, 808, I didn't want to uh, um, uh, mess with it too much. I put like a little bit of harmonic, harmonic, uh, uh, um, harmonics on it with the inflator, very subtle. Like if you just look at the meter here, it's almost nothing. Just, just, just jumping a little bit, but uh, one of the things I like I like doing on that was uh, running some stuff in parallel. So again, here's my um, Saturn, which is a great plugin from from FabFilter. Uh, again, pre fader. Uh, this is just adding some grit to the 808. You know, part of, part of the stuff with 808s and working with drums like this, it's you know, when I'm at my studio, I have these massive barefoot speakers that go down really low. You want to have uh, um, you want to be able to have these things cut on earbuds. You know, I have those hooked up permanently in the studio to check on. You want them to, cu uh, to cut on PC speakers. That's the challenge with the 808s, and that's achieved by doing this parallel processing, which is all about getting harmonics. And someone asked me before, do I EQ um, my uh, pre-faders? And you can see here I do. 
So the 808, I'm running parallel. The Saturn distortion, it's, it's so nasty. If you heard this distortion by itself, it's a, uh, but uh, that's the point of it. I'll, I'll, I'll play it and uh, I'll bring it up and you'll see how, like, how, how hard it is. So that's what it sounds like if it was cranked. But you know, when I have that mixed in, it's like, and it's like the edge of the little bit of the edge of that that helps it cut through on these small speakers. Um, and then that in conjunction with uh, uh, Max Bass, I still use the old school Max Bass, it's been around forever. But uh, here I just have it outputting the Max Bass effect only, and I had that shifted out, you could see, to like, you know, the, the, the farther hundreds to like two hundreds hertz just to get it to pop a little bit more on, on a small speaker. Again, that's mixed in in parallel. Um, part of the reason why I filter, you can see I'm filtering out the subs uh, on these uh, the pre-fader sends. Um, first of all, you don't need it. B, you want to really watch out for phase. Like any kind of phase issue with 808s, you know, you, you, you're done, you know? So it's, it's like, you, you, even though the plugins and the delay compensation, everything is supposed to be in phase, sometimes things could uh, go awry. Sometimes you might be using a new plugin and there might be something up with the code. Um, you know, if, if, if you're in doubt and you don't want to filter, I would suggest printing and then lining things up, like viewing the waveform and nudging them to, to get it. But you, you know, that's what you have to really watch out because the slightest bit of phase, Error or, or phase misalignment with 808s, you'll you'll lose your punch and your whole your whole aggression. And you know, notice there's no compression going on with 808. You know, in general with drums, I don't compress a lot at all. Like you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, it's a drum, snare drum. I better first thing let me throw a compressor on it. Uh, I tend not to do that. You know, compression can kill mixes more than help them a lot of the times, especially if you're just kind of randomly throwing it on there because. Um, you know, the whole feel of the track is like the attack of the snare, the attack of the kick. And, you know, if you're not compressing right, you're gonna, you're just gonna, that energy is gonna be gone. So, you know, I tend, you know, not even to, to, unless it really needs it, unless, you know, you have a live drummer who's not hitting hard enough and you really need to bring something out, I don't, um, I tend not to, to, to deal with that. Um, uh, there's also a high-end kick that um, this was added by L, which is which was a nice addition. It kind of also helps this kick cut. That's where your punch is coming from, you know, on that, and it follows the sub nice. And I made sure these are both in phase, so um, you know, you don't, this high kick isn't lo you're not losing any kind of uh, phase because it's not in phase with 808. Everything's in in, in, uh, in phase. And again, I have some. Um, some processing on here, a little of the Mag EQ, just bringing up some of the sub of that a bit more. The Mag EQ is great, I, it's, it's great on a lot of things. Um, I'm taking out some of the lows here, just so it doesn't, you know, the, the purpose of this kick was to add to, to the punch, and uh, I kind of wanted that 808 to have its own, like, apartment, you know, like, it's just, like, just by itself, it's just, no, nothing's in, in its realm. And then a little bit of a lo-fi, um, lo-fi is a, uh, a great plugin, Digi plugin that I use a, a lot. Just to, and I use I usually only bring that up like one or two, three uh, percents on the distortion knob, um, and helps things cut. And then, uh, and this all this stuff is going to 808, um, uh, the 808 kick, uh, um, the 808 sub bus, uh, and this is just an 808 that fills, it comes in the same sound, and then. Um, and then the 808, which is, a, this is the end, uh, end of the song, which is one of my favorite parts. Um, it's, it's, it's Quante's 808, and then a, a massively uh, ducking one with the compressor. You can really hear it sucking, and then like the, the uh, you know, uh, giving it some lo-fi for this attack part to cut a bit more. And, uh, and then the snare stuff. So let's get to that real quick. I'll try, oh no, I know I'm running out of time. I'll try to move quick. The snare, um, uh, there was an acoustic snare, snare um, um, that I'm running through uh, 
uh, very light uh, reverb. By the way, the, um, the kick space is something I like using. Uh, it's a kick reverb. I mean, that's kind of like a lot of people don't put reverb on kicks. Um, but uh, uh, the Oxford reverb has a, a cool section where they have like a lot of early reflections and it helps create a lot of, like for this song, it helped the kick get a little bit bigger without like blowing it out with reverb and whatnot. And um, this room has a lot of reverb, so I, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but let's see. It just lets the tone carry a little bit more and gives it a little more separation, uh, just in the in the in the uh, the punchy parts, not in the low parts. Uh, but the Oxford uh, reverb is really good with that kind of stuff. Um, now with the um, the snare, there's an acoustic snare. Uh, I have a. I'll show you again just some a, a light bit of uh, um, uh, re um, early reflections on that. Then one thing I like doing, it's kind of a trick I do or whatever, is uh, for the for the main reverb for the snare to give it some space. I'll pitch the whole the whole track down. So this was this was the, the original acoustic snare. Right now. You're hearing the pre the pre fader stuff. That's what the why you hear some of the low end. But um, then why did I pitch it down? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's really low now. But what I do is I pitch the the snare down. Here I pitch it down a major fourth, um, and then uh, all I'm letting out, like I didn't want to. I didn't want to have the high frequency in the reverb for that snare. I kind of wanted more body in the reverb. So what I did is I pitched the whole, I duplicated the track, then I pitched the, pitch shifted the whole snare drum down a fourth. That was just musically what sounded best. Sometimes that varies. I do, I do this kind of thing a lot. And then um, I'll put a reverb that I like on it. And um, I had the mix set to completely wet. So the dry signal isn't coming through. It's just a reverb. And... Um, um, it kind of adds a nice, uh, uh, thicker reverb tone to the snare drum in, in, without getting into the highs. Because um, the highs I like keeping as clean as possible also. Bringing it up, you can hear. You can hear like that deep, deeper echo in it, you know. So mixed in, I kind of like that. And there's also white noise combined with the snare. And then there's an acoustic, I mean, I'm sorry, a synth snare also. And then all these are going through a main snare trim, you know, a VCA. So that's your whole, and then your hat, just to get to the hat. Distortion, which was one of my favorite things for hats. Um, a lot of times I'll boost lows and cut highs on hats. You know, I, I, I don't find it necessary too much to add more sizzle to a hat. You know, here I added a little bit after I cut some. Um, but, you know, you don't want your hats interfering with your vocals. It, it sounds funny, but, you know, especially if you have like something like a closed hat, a uh, uh, high hat, that frequency, you know, sometimes gets in the sibilance range of the vocals. So, so, so a lot of times I'll create a, a group, which is the hi hat and the vocals. And, you want to make sure your your um, you know the, the S part of the of of the vocals isn't the same frequency or isn't clashing with like any kind of hi hats you know otherwise it, you know it creates like a weird uh, harsh part in the mix so it's something to look forward and what I usually do in that case is I go for the um, hi hat and I'll find that frequency and dip it out of the hi hat just to give the vocals because the vocals are really important that you're going to hear the hat you know what I mean. Uh, but you, you, you got to watch out for that clash between the, the, the S, the vocal S, and the hi hat. And there, there wasn't a problem here, so I didn't have to do that. So um, you know, it's not a lot of compression. So that's your power of the song. The next thing, you know, with, with tracks, with this track in particular is, um, 
you know, listening to it. And where, where's, where else is your power coming from? Like, what, you know, there's, a, there's the main vibe of the song and then there's your power. There's these stabs going on, which are very important, which are here. And that, that kind of moves the track along also. So, you know, when I first approached this track, besides the drums, you hear the, something like the stabs, those are really important. What, what I, you know, like doing with stuff like that is I do automation. So based like on every other one, you know, just to keep the ear interested, you know, I'll boost one up a dB, next one will be down a half, next one may be up two, just to keep things popping in the song, you know, and, and keeping the ear interested. Um, um, and you'll see that throughout this with the stab, with this um, stab sound. Um, and then um, another great plugin, I, uh, the track I use called Guitar Movement is this, um, this Wave plugin called ADT. I have this, the, the uh, stab going through that and it, 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 uh, it gives it a lot, of, um, it gives it some cool movement, some space left to right when it's panning without using reverb. Like in, in, in these hip hop tracks where, when there's a lot going on and you don't want things getting that cluttered up, I like having, uh, you know, doing things other than reverb to create space. And this is, this is a really good one. It works really good on vocals also. Um, okay, now this. I'm gonna unsolo everything. So like now, this guy was like one of your main, I mean, it's how the song starts also. And um, again, mag EQ, I um, increased the center on this one, uh, the sides, just to give it some, a little bit of sparkle on the sides, because the drums is where I wanted all my mono, between the drums and the vocals. This still is mostly mono, but it, it adds some excitement to the sides and um, some distortion. And um, I also have it going through this, um, I call it AE Excite, because that's the, 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 um, the track it's called. And um, it's like a, a doubler that kind of excites with high frequencies the, the, um, the, um, that sound, again, just going to the sides. So um, just an effect that I used on that, kind of gave it a cool vibe. And it's an important, it goes through the whole song, so it's an important so uh, sound, really important. And complaining with these guys. You know, and that's your, your, your meat of the song. There's a bass line, and uh, it's uh, synth bass. It has a good low frequency content, but it has like a nice buzz to it. Um, and um, uh, I did some high boosting with the Mag EQ, um, nothing with that. And then a sat the other saturation plugin I like, besides the last two I mentioned, the, uh, the Sonics and the, um, the Saturn, this, this Brainworks uh, a BX Saturator. It's, it's, it's great stuff for bass, and it has the Mono Maker if you need it, which kind of will just put all the low frequencies in one sound. And um, so that. <laughs> Okay, so that's like the main vibe of the song. You know, that's the kind of the stuff when I listen to this, this is important. It's all important, but this is what, 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 what's driving the, driving the train. And then you have like your, your, your elements that come in and out which um, um, when that kind of stuff happens, it's an important event. I always make a marker. You can see here, it says like, you know, L verse three horns. Um, and then again, if you want in the settings, it's just kind of like Maggie Q for the horns, filters. I mean, w when you have that much low end going on from the drums, I kind of take the sub lows out of uh, a lot of uh, everything else that's going on without affecting the sound. You know, um, you don't want to take from anything, like any of these synths and whatnot, but sometimes there's like, like some real sub lows that aren't, 
you're not gaining anything from. So just taking some of that stuff out um, in a lot of places helps. And um, that's the gist of the song until the end. And then, and then you know, whenever stuff happens like um, in the song, other than that stuff, it's all important stuff, so it should all pop, you know, and, and that's the way I EQ'd stuff. Like, you'll see stuff that comes in and out here, like there's these great sounds, these great, uh, this is all analog synth stuff. Again, um, and then the song continues the same vibe, and then the 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 um, the, um, the outro is uh, uh, one of my favorite parts. It's uh, I'm trying to think here where the um, there's one one um, part to the. It's the Okay, that audio file is missing with the cowbell, but that's that's kind of like uh, a <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts too. But uh, that, that didn't come through. But again, that when that cowbell came in, it was like, oh man, I, I just love the end section of that song, and um, um, used the, my Maggie Q again. Um, I increased like just the, the top end kind of shine with the, the Ozone Seven, and then. Um, Lo-fi, not like again, 0.1. I never go more than like 0.3 with this guy. It's like very powerful, uh, especially with lo low end stuff, bass and stuff, but it's good for like hats and, and stuff like that, bell and whatnot uh, also. Um, and um, oh yeah, and, and uh, let me just go through these real quick before I go through some questions. The, the woos, which, are, which is a great part of the song too. This sound here is my favorite. This is a whistle. It's, yeah, it's a lot to this. This, um, in terms of like spatialness, this Doctor MS is a great plugin for um, uh, uh, MS stuff. Just putting stuff on the sides. Um, again, when you're dealing with big drums and stuff like that, and synths and a lot of layers. You know, creating space is, is, is part of uh, the battle, just like kind of like pulling a little bit away from the middle and pushing a little out on the sides without like ruining any of your mono compatibility. Um, that's another important thing you guys should always check. You know, I suggest getting one of the best pieces of gear. It's not an exciting piece of gear, but one of the best things to buy is a, is a good monitor controller. Uh, uh, so you could switch speakers, you could sum to mono. You know, that's like, that's, Super important. That should be almost like your first purchase. I, I use the um, Dangerous uh, Audio uh, Monitor ST, it's called. It has a mono button. You can control a bunch of different speakers. Um, you know exactly where your monitor level is, which is extremely important. You know, I could get to that too. But mono compatibility is really important. People forget about that. Some of these plugins have presets that you turn it on, it sounds crazy. It's like, oh my God, this, it's, but it's, you hit the mono button and the sound's completely gone. It's like almost completely out of phase. And people are like, well, it's all right. You know, I'm listening mainly, mainly in headphones and you know, it sounds dope in the studio, who cares? Thing is, if you're mixing for a touring band, like these guys, or you're mixing stuff, or you're mixing some trap or some club music that's gonna be played in a nightclub, um, you know, most uh, um, venues, will convert, will sum to mono. Because, you know, you walk into a club, you walk into a venue like this, and there's, you know, there's 40 speakers in the place. There's no stereo, right? There's no, there's no imaging. Um, everything, like for the house system, they'll sum to mono, and they'll play it throughout. If you're in a club, the same thing. 
So if you have a sound, a cool synth, that's like not mono compatible, like when you hit the mono button, it goes away. W when you play that stuff in a club, it's gonna be the same thing. Like you'll be missing a sound. And I've heard, I, I hear mixers now that I can't believe have made it past mastering. And I'm like, oh my, you know, I'll, I'll listen to it in my studio and I, I almost fall out of my chair. It's so out of phase and uh, I hit the mono button and then the sound is just gone, you know. But, um, you know, I guess, it, I guess it, people like the, the way it sounds. This Dr. MS though was a really, really cool plug-in for, 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 for that kind of stuff, and it's extremely mono-compatible. You don't lose any vibe. Um, you know, and then the rest of that stuff. Yeah. And these woos are cool. Like oh, yeah, I gotta get going. Anyway, those woos, which are a big part of the song too. Echo Boy, Rotary Speaker. Um, a little pro Q filtering and some sides, uh, you know. Anyway, there's a lot that, it's funny, this is like, you know, track-wise, it's like, you know, it's not, it's, it, there's, there's um, it seems like there, there's like a lot going on, even though like sonically it sounds like, oh, it's just like, a, it's, this is a lot of stuff going on. I, I thought I was gonna run, I wasn't gonna have enough time to talk about it, but I, did. <laughs> I, I ran out of time. But hope you guys got some, 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 some info.